Hello, my name is Paul Hugenboom. I'm the president of Tremco Construction Products Group. Um, normally I'm introduced by Marcy Tyler, and as you can see, I have an empty chair there. So uh, Marcy's apparently running late. I called her, uh, her daughter, Kayla, to try to find out where mom is. And Kayla said mom might have started the weekend early, right? So I don't know what that means, but uh, Kayla is, of course, looking for mom, and uh, we'll wait a few minutes. And uh, if we, if Marcy does not join us, then uh, well, we'll just have to see what I come up with for our half hour together. So, uh, any event, uh, Kale is delightful. She interned for us uh, last couple summers, I think. And uh, you know, maybe maybe one day, uh, well, maybe Kayla could be here one day if Marcy doesn't show up, because uh, Kayla certainly learned quite a bit about building science from mom uh, over the years. So. Uh, Anyway, so uh, well, I guess we'll just we'll just hang out, and uh, guess we'll see what happens. Oh, oh my gosh, Paul! Paul! Is it, oh Marcy? Is that you? You're yeah, not here. Me. So, so are you like like where are you? Are you at home? I, I thought we were having a celebratory drink for our tenth episode or our tenth tenth broadcast. Now that's interesting, Marcy. You and I have talked about that perhaps we could lighten up and uh, and move this from our headquarters venue to, uh, you know, what, what do we call that? An adult establishment, right? 18 yeah. and over. Yeah, exactly. Yep. We'll have to do, we'll have to do that one time. I thought, I thought you were going to meet me, but we'll do it on maybe our, our hundredth. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think there's a case to be made because, you know, our, our whole theme is it's been a long week. It's the end of a long week. Hang out with us for a half hour. You know, something fairly light but informational. And uh, I think maybe we could aspire to uh, permanently uh, moving moving the venue. But for today, right now, you're exhibiting great leadership because you're not here. You're in such a venue, and I am here. So uh, we're at least halfway there. So Marcy, yeah. what do you got for us today? Well, I actually, the idea came from Elise Bigley. She thought she re she realized it was the tenth broadcast on July tenth, and we had some pretty uh, great content that was given to her by a colleague of ours, and it was the top ten building enclosure concerns. So we thought that that would be a great way to kick off our tenth broadcast. So that's what the topic of today is. Is the top 10 building enclosure concerns. Thought that'd be pretty cool. Well, that's that's great. I would have never come up with that on my own, Marcy. So you, <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you made it. Maybe maybe Elise was sitting here with me and we came up with that. We were counting bottles of beer and uh, building enclosure issues. <laughs> yeah. So um, as always, we like to talk about things that are going on in the industry, and um, this is part of uh, when we have customers come through, right? Paul, when we have our tours, we talk about, you know, why do buildings still leak? Um, moisture and energy leaks are common, despite everything that we know and we're educating everybody on. So we're looking for responsibility for quality control, spec enforcement, building envelope integrity, making sure that lowest price isn't the one that's technically accepted and that hold by others. And I think that's a huge part of where we play today. When you, you introduce us every week, we talk about the Tremco Construction Products Group, right? That fine collection of products, custom um, <laughs> systems, and people. And I think that's where we're really trying to focus on is the education of that holistic approach to that whole building enclosure. I think the other thing, Marcy, that that, that always that always strikes me is it's really about teamwork, right? Marcy and you always um, deliver a real powerful message that n nobody alone, certainly not Tremco alone, can get to a, a high quality building outcome. It's really a it's a it's a true partnership of everybody involved from the from the beginning of the concept and the design of the building right up to the final commissioning. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, that. That whole um, team effort, right, for the the owner, the design professional, the installer, and of course the material supplier coming together, working holistically, so that we don't have schools that open in September and then they're closed in November, 
or connectivity issues where products were incompatible or thermal bridging or thermal inefficiencies, right? So all, for all of those reasons, we wanna educate and stay focused on that. This information was brought to us by a colleague all about you know, building envelopes today. And this is from Zurich Insurance. We pay out hundreds of millions of dollars every year in construction claims. This is a quote from them. And 70% of those are due to water and moisture issues in the enclosure. And we know 90% of those are lack of terminations, right? And connectivity. Yeah, it's, it, it's interesting, Marcy, as long as you and I have been doing this, you know, the, the thing that we've tried to do to simplify it is as Tremco, we run to those interfaces, right? And, yeah. and again, those are where you have two components coming together and it's not clear it's generally not clear as to who has responsibility for that and the and the thing that you know we always like to say is we want you to think of tremco as owning that interface and we we strategically as a company look to run to that interface and solve that problem exactly yep we we want that ability to solve that problem and make that design challenge we want to validate it and show the performance that we can achieve from it. This is also from my same colleague. Um, he talks about if you look at a wall assembly, how many products are there? So there's probably even more than we're listing here, but we talk about three different types of backup walls. And we know there's many, there's even more of those. There's five different types of air barriers. There could be four different types of insulation and four different types of cladding. And all together, Paul, how many different products do you think that makes up? Well, there, I think that's a tricky question, right? Because, <laughs> because uh, interestingly, I do have a math degree, and normally I would add up three plus five plus four plus four, right? You'd say, uh, well, let me see, what do we got there? Eight and eight, we got sixteen, Marcy, right? So, but really, what are the? That's really a trick question because how many of these all have to connect to the other, right? So, so there is a lot of combinations of compatibility going on here. That's a lot more than just 16, right? So I've, over the years, I've learned a lot from you about this word compatibility uh, and the need for that compatibility to be tested. Yep. So there's 116, if we did that, all the different combinations. But we're not even considering all the different manufacturers associated with each of those. So that complexity continues to grow, which is why months ago when we started talking about the ability of having, you know, Nadora drive it, will seal added to our portfolio and part of that Tremco construction products group, it, it was great because we could have 116 wall configurations of all of our products. So it's very exciting. Yeah, and I think Marcy, this also speaks to you know we're just huge proponents of of uh, of using you know our test wall capabilities, and we we always, of course, our, uh, our our message whenever you host anybody is welcome home, and it's really the use of of that testing, and we do uh, very much uh, message that we think it's a best practice to. Uh, test your configuration, whether it's 116, and obviously in the end there's millions, right, Marcy? And it's really about testing whatever that final configuration is, just to, uh, you know, an ounce of prevention, right, it's worth a pound of cure. But that test right at the beginning of that construction process is so important. Exactly. Another, another fact here, you know, what would you do to prevent that rework on your next job site? This, this information, you know, two to 20% of your contract could go to rework. So depending on the size of your job, for a $50 million job, that could be $1 million to $10 million of rework. So another huge reason why we want to make sure that we validate, test, and understand those configurations ahead of time. Yeah, that, that's, that's, uh, that's always a surprisingly large number. And the other thing that's interesting, Marcy, is it is actually very avoidable, um, yeah. but, but requires, as we said at the very beginning, requires both that partnership and requires that we validate the configuration. Yep. So I've been leading us to our guest today, Paul. Um, this 
individual I met years ago on a job site. Um, when you think of this individual, he talks a lot about education. You can see three pictures there of him in the process of educating people. He talks a lot about quality assurance, as that was his role and has been his role for many years. Um, there's an article uh, written about him from the Airberry Association. Um, and he's done several blogs for Tremco on Build Meets World. So education, quality assurance, and then I always like to keep there that trust but verify. And it goes back to making sure that we're validating our systems and getting that information. So I think I've led us up to this point to introduce our industry, our, our colleague that was an industry colleague of ours, Brian Strike. Welcome, Brian. Good afternoon, and thank you for uh, having me on today, Paul, Marcy. Hopefully, uh, I'm a little jealous. I, I'm not sitting at the daiquiri bar myself, Paul. I think <laughs> I'm not at the end of this show. Hey, I told Paul to meet me here. You know, I I don't know. I don't. But you know. left me out. I did leave you out. You look. Yes. Yeah, next time, uh, yeah. we'll, we'll hopefully we can all be together and do that for sure. Well, glad so, to be here. It's uh, glad that the uh, presentation here, the top ten, seems to fit your theme today on the tenth and your tenth episode. So exactly. thank you so much for having me. Yeah, and I was trying to figure out, Brian, how many years ago we met. It might have been ten years ago. It, it's close. It was out in California. Yeah. Hey, Marcy, I've, I've heard you tell the story from time to time. Give us a little more detail on how you really met Brian. Like, what, what went on? How did you build your relationship? Well, I think it's funny because I think, Paul, you've told me when I tell the story, it's a little different than how Brian tells the story. So I'll tell it my way. And, and Brian, you can you can uh, fill in here and there. But I was going to the job site that Brian just mentioned in California, Northern California. And um, our uh, sales rep had let me know that the mock-up that we were putting together, um, there was a quality representative that was going to be there and he was a pain in the butt. So I said, really? Okay, no worries. I'll talk to him. Not a problem at all. And so as he started walking towards me, I'm like, yeah, he doesn't look that pain in the butt-ish. He did make us rebuild that mock-up twice though. So I guess you could consider that, but I learned why. And it was the focus on quality and the installer and making sure that we were consistent with the training. So we weren't applying the product the way it was going to be applied on the job site. So we had to redo it. And then the crew that was trained was no longer going to be the crew that was going to be on the project. We had to train them again. So, so it sounds like <laughs> sounds like he was a real stickler for detail, Marcy. He was absolutely a stickler for detail for sure. Absolutely. No, that was a fun project, though, a very successful project. So yeah. it was that mock-up was critical. It, it goes back to that test but verifying one of my favorite phrases when I speak. So yeah. I appreciate you putting that in there in the intro. Yes. Yeah, you know, and I, I learned a little bit about you, Brian. I read the information from the Airberry Association and I didn't realize you were a psychology major. Hard to believe, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that was my major and I had actually thought about going into college coaching and yeah. just uh, life throws you curveballs and, and here we are today. Exactly. Well, I, I, I would, now you mentioned that you are kind of a coach, right? You are very much a coach, I think, of, of our of our industry, right? And and coaching everybody to how to come together as a team, right, for a better outcome. So I'm not I'm not so sure that your your uh, college training isn't being put to good use, Brian. Yeah, Paul, and that's part of the reason. You know, I've been with Trump going on for about five years, and I realized when I was at my last employer. I enjoyed, like you just said, the education, the learning, and the sharing of education. And it was a big thing that Tremco does, is share that with, with people and, and try to educate. So it was just, a, to me, it was a great win-win situation. Yep, we used to say, if we could be on the same team, it would be like Wonder Twins. So <laughs> for those of you that know that cartoon from a long time ago, I'm a we're aging ourselves there. So A little bit, yeah, a little, a little bit. A little bit. So, you know, um, Let's, without further ado, let's get right into those. Um, so I, I put this together. This is your top 10 on one slide here. So the top 10 building enclosure concerns. We're going to walk through each of them. Um, if you guys have questions about them, um, please submit them into the um, Q&A section, section and we'll get them as we can. And if we do not get them, the questions answered live, we will be sure to reach back out and answer them for you. Um, these are uh, what Brian put together. He can give this presentation, what, normally in an hour and a half, and now you've got 16 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's, this is normally a good hour and 15 minute and up to an hour and a half with good question presentation, but uh, we'll, we'll hit the highlights, Marcy, and, yes. and I think people will be 
get the flavor of it. So, so number 10. Yeah, but, you know, I'm going to pick on everybody a little bit here. Uh, being that I, I am a, a union trained carpenter myself, uh, I've owned my own residential companies and worked for a large CM for a lot of years before coming over to Tremco. I have to say we're part of the blame, the CM and pushing schedule and trying to meet that owner's needs and maybe telling our subs, you know, we don't want to hear your excuses, get it done. And, you know, as you can see in the picture with the circles, there's, you know, the substrate's not ready for the next step. Or we sit there and put schedules out that aren't, you know, manageable or able to be met due to whatever constraints. Uh, take the current situation we're in with COVID. Obviously, it changed a lot of schedules, but even weather. So, you know, CM is, plays a, a part in, in some of these issues. Marcy, next slide. Sure. Number nine. Yeah, Marcy kindly rephrased this one as building science. It really is architects. Um, you know I'm how I love the, you know how I love building science. I, I know, and that, that's part of it. Uh, the world of building science, I like to say, is evolving about as fast as our cell phones. Uh, we used to have, be really happy with the flip you know, old Razor Motorola's. And today, you know, think about the power of the computer in your pocket. Uh, think back then to 2001, when the Air Barrier Association of America was formed, the group that was originally forming it came together, put everything they had in the United States on codes and standards on the table so they could start to talk about air barriers. It was a blank table. That was 19 years ago. Now we know air barriers are critical for so many things, they're in all of our codes, all of our energy requirements and standards. But building science and the evolution, you know, it's just, it's so rapid that some of the architects that have graduated, we'll even say, you know, 2005 and earlier, might not have received the same education as people are today. So when we're doing a lot of presentations, we're trying to educate, it's hard to blame the architect for maybe not showing the continuity. They may, were never taught that. And it, it makes our industry difficult. Well, I think you're, you're, you know, I, I, you're, I stole your beginning slides as well, right? So the, those right. 116 different configurations, right? We're, we're, we all add to the complexity of that. So it, it is, it's, it's a big deal for yeah. many reasons, right? Absolutely. Talking to specifiers and architects, there are so many products a that are out in the market for years, and they're coming out on a regular basis. They can't keep up, and they need the assistance of manufacturers and reps and people who understand how these buildings go together in order to properly design them. I mean, there are some excellent people out there, but again, this building science really is evolving. Yeah, and you and you mentioned um, in the information that I was reading this morning was that it's it's all about faster, right? So they're expecting faster construction, but they're Absolutely. also with the yeah. same quality expectations, right? Yeah. Absolutely, the, the construction schedule is getting more and more compressed. That's part of the reason why we're seeing panelization and we're seeing products, uh, you know, and I can think of our SC430 with drive it being panelized, going out on site and really rapidly being able to enclose something. Uh, but again, you think about how fast that is and the owner just wants it and they don't want anything wrong. Nobody right. wants to get a, a leaky building. Nobody wants a failed building. And, yeah. but they're being more and more complex. I, I heard a colleague of ours, Bob Dizel, made the comment, there's over 3000 products sent to a, a job site, typical job site. And yeah, it's just yeah. the complexity and the speed, it, it continues to, to increase. Yep, it, that's and that's amazing when you think about that number and it's it's everyone wants it faster, safer and better. Yep, next slide, Marcy. Number eight. Lack of use of modeling and, and moisture locations. Um, our, our modeling is getting pretty, pretty good these days, but again, garbage in, garbage out. But there are a number of different types of models out there that we can use to help us um, assist design, ensure things will be installed properly, that after they're installed, we're not going to have major failures. And, you know, depending on who you are out there, if you're a CM, GC, even the architect, there are people out there that will help you do some of these models, either at low cost, no cost. You need to ask. And it's not a catch-all, end-all situation with modeling, but it can give you a good indication of, if your systems are going to work where you're designing them and in the way you're designing them. So I know we use Woofy ourselves quite a bit to, just to demonstrate uh, how, how that wall system is going to work. Exactly. Yep. That it's, it's a great reference, right? And it's a great tool. And I think that is why there's 10 top 10. There's a top 10, right? Because this is one element of it, right? Um, one Absolutely. piece of it. 
Number seven, Marcy. Yep. Existing buildings. This is becoming a bigger and bigger and bigger industry concern, and, and maybe I need to redo my top 10 and move this up in the numbers. Uh, we are getting better at insulating existing buildings and updating existing buildings from different facades, whether, for instance, the picture on the left, if you want to reskin that with an EFS coating, or the picture on the right, if you have to insulate it from the inside. Uh, it's becoming more and more owners are looking to do this to reduce their energy costs. But there are cautions and concerns in doing it. You have an existing facade. It's been working a certain way under certain conditions for 20, 30, 50 years. When you start to add new components, that's where the modeling comes in. You, you need to do some modeling or testing of the existing products to make sure it can handle the new changes to what you're doing. Uh, one of the concerns, if, if you insulate from the inside and you have a softer brick, you might have issues with freeze thaw on that brick and suddenly you have bricks falling in the middle of winter and kind of flying out at people as they walk underneath. So again, doing the right thing, doing your due diligence when you use, you know, when you're trying to rework existing buildings is huge. Yep. Number six. Thermal insulation. This one's been very interesting. The picture on the left was actually from a project of mine probably in the mid 2000s. And you can see it's rigid insulation on the outside of a building and every joint I'll say is quote unquote buttered with an expanding foam. There, there are no gaps. So there's an air barrier material behind it. The insulation is good and tight. It's on the outside of the building where it should be. And it's a really good building. But there are problems when we build. Uh, the middle picture is showing a good standoff. When people want to use things like lintels, or different types of uh, fasteners coming through. You have all these thermal bridging, or you have some areas of the country where they're still putting all the insulation in the walls. Well, these are areas where we see a lot of problems with moisture and failures and mold versus putting it where it should be on the outside. Um, it, you're seeing this thermal insulation, you know, in our energy codes, forcing it to the outside, but not everybody is up to date with these. Not, I mean, we have different states in, in our union who don't build to a building code, and then they wonder why they're having these failures. Well, and I think, um, you know, obviously with our thermal chamber that will be here this month, the month of July, oh, we're looking forward wait. to, you know, validating some of those early models that you mentioned, but then also looking at the effect of, you know, outbound insulation, thermal, bid, thermal bridging, and different ways that we can um, reduce that or eliminate that effect. So we're excited about being able to look at look at some of these things in, in greater detail with our thermal chamber, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I remember writing letters to Trumpco about eight years ago about thermal chamber, and it's, believe me, I'm very, very excited now that I'm a, a employee here to see this thing coming to fruition this next month. Yeah. And what's interesting, Marcy, when you mentioned the thermal chamber is, and we know this every time that we create a new testing capability we generally get things proven out that we always thought were true and then we get a lot of things showing to us that are really i would say counterintuitive and what's interesting marcy is with the thermal chamber we're really doing work that's never been done before right so uh um that surprised me some years ago when you sat me down and you said hey paul we need to do this um I was I was honestly surprised, right? I'm not I'm not I'm not growing up in this industry like you and Brian. And I was surprised that we're we're really charting new ground with that with that thermal chamber. So it's going to be a very exciting year one, and I get the feeling that Brian's going to have quite a bit of influence on what we test. Oh yeah, I'm I'm Paul. I'm very excited for this thing to to kick off. That's for sure. Mercy number five. Trying to keep you in your time limit, Marcy. So yep. no, we're good. <laughs> Spray polyurethane foam. Uh, it's an interesting product. It's one of the few products actually manufactured out on site and it can work very well. Or as you see in the picture on the right, it can cause some headaches. So again, just be cautious with this product. Make sure you understand the installation. Make sure you understand again the connectivity to other parts and pieces. It does give off an exothermic reaction over 200 degrees. So Depending on what flashings you're using, it can melt flashings. It can. Uh, we've we had one story at ABBA where it actually got a call as the house was burning down because um, the exothermic reaction was so high, it caused the OSB it was adhered to to start up in flames. So again, it's like anything else. Understand your products. Understand what they're connecting to, 
and make sure you, you fully understand what you're doing for you use this product. Well, that's a, a question that just came in was just actually just about that, you know, understanding limitations. So that was what, what the question was about was limitations. And I think the, the best way to answer that is what I always like to say is partner with your manufacturer, right? Know yeah. the manufacturer, make sure you've got those limitations up front. And I think as we approach, as we're getting close to one, there's going to be other ways that we can communicate this stuff yeah. that are part yeah. of your top 10. Absolutely. Just real one final thing there. Yeah, yeah. partner with your manufacturer, understand uh, in the United States, anybody can spray. And there are some organizations that certify sprayer, sprayers. If you're in Canada, you have to be a certified installer. And it, it's a big difference. So you can get anybody in a pickup today installing spray foam in the US. That's a scary thought. Yeah, absolutely it is. Number four, Marcy. Installation, this goes right back to number five. Understanding the, how materials are supposed to be installed using, you know, for instance, on the left hand side, if it's a fluid applied, do you have the right wet mill thickness? Is somebody checking that? Um, I, I remember as a QA, QC manager having seen the bare block and having the installer tell me, well, it tells me so many square feet. I sprayed so many square feet. I'm done. And I, I'm sitting there with my hands in here going, you're nuts. I, you didn't even cover the whole you know substrate but to them they were good uh, so understand how materials are installed making sure if you have to roll things that you roll them making sure if you use right fasteners and right spacing but just understanding the, the application instructions and, and having your your manufacturers come out during some installations and verifying things and double checking things if you're the cm take advantage of the manufacturers like like tremco and drive it and Udura, who are, want to be on your job site who want to come out, walk through, and see what's going on, because we don't want to be getting that call later on and saying something's wrong. Yeah, so take exactly. advantage of, of the manufacturer's reps. And I think I think Brian, this is also a good point that we're constantly when we innovate new systems, we're constantly trying to simplify the installation. Right? I mean, it's That's been a long-term trend in our industry that uh, less and less skilled labor available and um, we absolutely have to simplify our systems. And, and I know you're a big voice, right? In driving that within our company. Absolutely, SD430 was a fantastic product. Um, yep. Love it, you know, and we have a lot of other ones like that. Number, Number three. three. Number three, pre-construction team meeting. Yeah, to me, this is one of the most critical parts of, of kicking off a job is getting at one point before the enclosure gets started, get everybody who touches the enclosure from your mason, your air barrier guy, your glazer, your plumber, your electrician, anybody who's going to touch or penetrate the enclosure, sit around the table and talk through the construction of the project, looking at details, looking at concerns. The picture on your right, that detail alone took 45 minutes with all these people in a trailer going through it for sequencing. Because as it started up, certain people wanted to get in and out and wanted to do all the work at once. And they found out they couldn't, just the way that things were being sequenced. But this can help your project just immensely take off some of those RFIs, some of those issues, some of those last minute concerns as the building's being built. Um, question about that picture. Um, how many trades are represented by all those circles? Uh, well, I know, I think we had 11 circles, but I thought it was about six trades. Six trades. Six or seven trades. And that was yeah. part of the problem. A couple of the trades yeah. had to come back. And originally they didn't want to. The superintendents are like, I want to get done and get off the site. And as they start talking through it, they realized they couldn't do their work until, you know, they, they could do part of their work, but they had to come back later. It, it was great horse trading, if you will, within that conversation. And I noticed, Brian, I see that that's a parapet, and that is one of the biggest Achilles heels on, on a building, right? Well, it's one of the leakiest places of a building is, is that roof to wall connection. And that detail has to be looked at closely on any project. Absolutely. Number two, mock up and site testing. Uh, as was noted earlier between Paul and Marcy and myself, you know, the part of the reason why I came to Tremco was the test wall that we have. We have immense air and water testing capabilities, but the fact that we can mock up and test things, here's some pictures from different sites where you're seeing that happening. It, it's critical. Um, a presentation, I can talk for half a day just on mock-ups, and I do a presentation called the crash test dummy, the mock-up. 
because if you think back to the 80s where they had the crash test dummies talking about safety belts and the safety of your vehicles, that's what the mock-up is. It's that opportunity where you have all those 116 different types of walls, all the different manufacturers coming together, all these different points of intersection, gets you a chance to look at a lot of those and validate was even the, was the design correct? Is it the right products? Does the installer understand it? And I've seen failures in all three of those different areas where there wasn't the right product, where the installer didn't understand and the details didn't connect. And the mock-up validates that and helps helps everybody have a smoother project. There's there's so many pictures I could have chosen for this <laughs> this number two. Um, it was really hard to choose. Uh, we have a question that just came in. Um, what is the percentage of mock-ups that fail? From I was told by a national testing agency a couple of years ago that over 93% of mock-ups that get tested fail. Uh, think about that. Here are guys installing material, knowing it's going to be tested, and over 93% of those have failed. When I've gone and talked to other large uh, CMs, some of the biggest in the country, they tell me that number's low, that it, it's higher, that there are, that basically every mock-up they've ever tested has failed. So it just gives you an idea of the complexity of buildings we're doing today and the need to make sure we fully understand the installation. Do you, do you know the percentage of, of the times that mock-ups are required? I don't know that number, Marcy. I know it's growing. When I first started doing some mock-ups, which is actually for the project in the top right corner, that's an on-site test, but that was back in about 2004, 2005. Uh, mock-ups weren't as popular. Today we're seeing a lot more and more being uh, asked to be done. And we're seeing a lot of mock-ups where they're building a very small little building right on site. They pour a little mud slab, they'll build three sides of a building, and close off the fourth, and test it right there, which is a great way to do it. Because then as the trades come on site, they can actually see the expectations of how it's supposed to be installed. Um, if you're looking at time or weather, again, using test labs, if you're using our products, like I said, we encourage you guys to, to come and use our test lab. Every time we test, we learn more and more, and the mock-up and using a test wall is a, is a great way to help your project. Yeah, it, would, it works great for a, a pre-con, you know, before construction begins, and then you can verify once you're on site. Absolutely. See, Brian, one of the things I've learned from you and Marcy is that the leading reason about why these mock-ups fail the first time is often sequence of installation, and that's one of the reasons we've invested so heavily in our 3D animations, right? That where um, once we get the sequence of installation right, we think it's a best practice to really create that 3D animation. So really at the start of every day, you can just pull out that big iPad Pro, walk the crew through it, right? So that every day is a new day, and. They get a chance to they get a chance to do it a little different, and that's not what we want. Any anything you want to add to that sequencing uh, thing that you've taught me over the years? Oh, that's Paul. That's a great point. Using if you can get small models, small three D printed models. If you can get um, you know isometric drawings, which I know design engineering does for us. Anything you can help to make sure the crews fully understand the sequence of installation and. I know with our CM program and our leak free warranty, we require all the tradesmen to touch the outside of the building to sit through their own education uh, to make sure they fully understand what happened at the mock up and the submittals and shop drawings. It's just education, education, education. That, that's the huge part. So, Marcy, number one. Number one. Well, to, before we hit that, number one, I, one of the things I read, Brian, that you wrote was there's three opportunities for failure. Design, materials, and installation, and yep. transitions, 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 <laughs> transitions, which is number one. Absolutely, and again, this is where you know we live uh, the by others, as you mentioned earlier, and, and Paul, you had mentioned the same thing. How do we, you know, we run to these failure points, but when you talk to the consultants and the people, the litigation lawyers, this is where they see the failures whether it's a roof to wall, a window to wall, wall to foundation, those transitions where one contractor leaves and another one starts, that's where these failures are coming in and that's where we get called back and there's lawsuits and there's potentials for mold and other things. And that's where CPG and Tremco, again, we, we live here. This is where we can help people out. Um, we can really 
work through these pre-cons and the mock-ups and give suggestions of multiple ways to solve a solution uh, or solve an issue, really encourage people to think about that. Anything that you're connecting, it's got to be compatible. It's got to, you know, adhesively, cohesively. You got to make sure it's going to stick to each other. It's going to last. That one product doesn't eat another product. Uh, there, there's in today's world with so many different things out there, it, it's difficult. When I there's a one of the presentations I've given, um, I show technologies aren't all created equal either, right? So you could have a technology base and, and feel as if you've got the knowledge of adhesion and compatibility, but because they're not all created equal, there's different volatile content in each of them, there could have different results. So it goes right back down to something so simple. And I think on the previous slide, we showed complicated mock-ups. And then one of the pictures is just an adhesion test, right? So that is just as critical. That knowledge of two products coming together is, is huge because it will impact, you know, the, the assembly's performance as well. Absolutely. And there are so many points and places for errors to go wrong. So again, it goes back to the mock-ups and the testing and the training. Exactly. Well, um, that's our top 10. Um, if, if I know, Brian, we made you go through that way quicker than you normally would, but it has been written up fresh off the presses today. Thanks to Elise Bigley um, working with Brian. We've got the top 10 building enclosure concerns as our most recent Build Meets World blog that you can find on our website. So there's more information there. Brian is also able to give this presentation to your firm in its entirety full of question, you know, asking your own questions. If we didn't get to anyone's questions, we will uh, via email. I uh, just want to close off with just saying, you know, we are here as an organization. We want to help you as much as possible so that we can reduce this risk that you see on your projects in every step of the way, providing warranties for that entire enclosure, a variety of integrated systems that come to you from that Tremco Construction Products Group, all the technical support, testing and on-site protocols, and my beer is getting cold, Paul and Brian. <laughs> so to, to officially celebrate our 10th broadcast, I really want to thank Brian for um, being able to be our presenter today and provide us with this great content. Paul, I'll be sitting near you soon next Friday. Uh, I, I don't know about that. I think you might. I think you might like where you are right now. I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I'm gonna have to come sit with you. That, I, that's good too. We can do that instead. I like that. I like. So um, I, like a couple more questions were coming in, just being respectful for time. We're going to close it off here. Um, next week, we are going to focus and continue um, our, connectivity, our connectivity, I cannot talk, connectivity <laughs> series for the month of July. So look forward to content each Friday in the month of July, focusing on what Brian said is our top or the number one of building enclosure issues is transitions. So that's why we chose that as our topic for this month. Thank you, everybody. We look forward to seeing you next time on Tremco Live.